the clearest possible terms, he will not let Americans get in the way of their plans for world domination. Anyone who tries to, you know, he's going to say this, will, tries to challenge China, will find their heads bashed bloody against a great wall of steel. So how's our woke military responding to this? Well, today we learned some soldiers are being encouraged to attend diversity events in honor of Pride Month. Some members of the Navy were required to go on a hike in support of the LGBTQ community. And there was a dress code, colorful clothing. Nothing wrong with that, just not sure that's a priority. I know Joe Biden isn't known for his grit, but is this really our focus here now? Co-host of Fox & Friends Weekend, Pete Hegseth, and former Secretary of State and Fox News contributor, Mike Pompeo. All right, Secretary Pompeo, China, rattling their sabers over here. I don't like it. What are your thoughts? Jesse, they see American weakness and they, they begin to act out in this way. We've seen this now for uh, six months with this administration unprepared to respond to Chinese aggression, Chinese threats, even with so much as a, a set of clear understandings about how America is going to respond. Remember, this administration that doesn't even want to know where the Wuhan virus came from hasn't done a thing to penalize the Chinese Communist Party for its activities in Hong Kong and in Western China. The, the Chinese can see weakness. They, they can see a, 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 an administration that's not prepared to respond in the way the Trump administration did with clarity and force and resolve. This is what it's going to take to deter Xi Jinping. You saw his words today. I've, I've had a chance to read a translation of his remarks. He is serious. He is confident. He is aggressive. He thinks America is declining. He's wrong about that, but it's going to take American leadership to prove him wrong. All right, Pete, what's your assessment of the U.S. military's posture when you hear <laughs> about lowering the standards and uh, diversity training and hiking in colorful clothing? Did, did you mm -hmm. ever used to go hiking in colorful clothing to celebrate uh, other people? I did a lot of hiking, no? uh, as, as did the secretary uh, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the infantry in the Army. A lot of hiking with 75 pounds on my back. But usually we were intended to not be seen in right. camouflage, not bright, colorful colors is usually the standard. I will say this, uh, Xi Jinping said out loud what their ambitions have been for decades now. It's been quiet. They've been using other cultural media advantages, economic advantages to try to gain a place where they're at levity with the United States. Some people there have called it uh, unrestricted warfare. And what they're seeing now is China's conducting unrestricted warfare, whether it's a virus, whether it's their economy, whether it's their culture, whether it's the media to try to undermine America. And our military is conducting unrestricted woke fare. I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke what's being done uh, with, with the example you told. The Air Force today says we're getting rid of our PT standards. It's just too rigorous that you would have to run one and a half miles. That's just too much. I mean, how, how dare we ask that of young men and women serving their country? It, we, our elites in Washington, especially right now, after the Trump administration, uh, don't live in history. They think America will be predominant in perpetuity, and they don't recognize that whether it's the Chinese or the Russians, and the secretary knows this, they have the ambition to want to be globally dominant. They can't be right now, but they're looking for every opportunity, and when they see what the silly stuff we're doing, they, they just lick their chops. They just lick their Secretary, chops. are you seeing anything out of the Biden administration that says that they are going to hold the Chinese communists accountable for the lab leak? Are they going to do anything that actually has teeth? Because right now I'm hearing a lot of let's go back to how things used to be, which is let them steal our technology and let our corporations do whatever they want over there and then sell the cheap goods back here at a huge profit. Jesse, sadly, I haven't seen any evidence of real action. I think, I think Pete nailed it when he talked about the fact that they can see this, too. They can see if our military is not focused on the one thing the military is supposed to do, right? Be prepared to defend America. They can see if a president is going to allow folks to run across their southern border, surely they're not going to stop the Chinese from running across a Taiwanese border. These are the kind of things the world perceives. They're watching so closely everything this administration does. And, and I've not yet seen the actions that would demonstrate resolve demonstrate American resolve in the way that can prevent this, uh, this effort that Pete nailed. The Chinese Communist Party wants a singular thing. They want global hegemony. He, we should believe what Xi Jinping yep. says. He's been at this for a while. And while they used to hide their strength and bide their time, they're now getting aggressive. It's going to require an American response that matches that. Real quick, Pete, because we do have to run. I'm hearing about this new push-up 
situation. You don't actually have to go all the way down. You, you can maybe put your arms out and then you don't actually have to run a mile and a half. You can do a shuttle run or you might be able to walk. W was that how it was when you were there? And when you think the Chinese see that, do you what do you think goes through their mind? Well, you always had people, Jesse, who tried to sham on the PT test, right? They got an injury, I can't run, I can't do that. That's always a reality, and the right. secretary knows that. It's, it, it's there. <laughs> but when the standard gets lowered right. for everybody, take your pick. You can do a plank or push-ups. You can do sit-ups or leg lifts. You can do a shuttle run or a 1.5-mile run. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be in the military. It's not the, what is it, ableism? Pete. Is ableism hey, our problem? If these now? are the standards, I, don't get it. I could get into the military. I mean, <laughs> and that's and you know what? <laughs> I'm better serving this country by being on TV. Gentlemen, thank I, you, you don't guys. You don't take orders well, Jesse. Thank you it's guys very much. Welcome back. It was an enormous celebration in Tiananmen Square this week, marking the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. Amid growing tensions with the United States, President Xi Jinping gave a rousing speech warning that China will not allow, quote, sanctimonious preaching or bullying from foreign countries, saying this, quote, anyone who dares try to do that will have their heads bashed bloody against the Great Wall of Steel forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. Wow. Joining me right now is China expert and the author of China's Vision of Victory, Dr. Jonathan Ward. And Jonathan, it's great to have you this weekend. Uh, your book laid all of this out, China's Vision of Victory. Give us your takeaways from the Xi Jinping speech and this celebration around 100 years of rule. Yesterday was about the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. That was the, the catchphrase that they're using throughout the entire thing. He's making it absolutely clear that the central mission of the Communist Party of China is the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And what that means is for China to become ultimately the dominant force on the planet. Um, you know, and, and the way that they see this, and this is where some of the language is incredibly interesting. Um, they talk about the opium wars. You know, during the opium wars in the 1840s, our civilization was, you know, became dust. Our people were humiliated. Our country was humiliated. You know, now we will never suffer that again. The new China has been built. And all the symbolism that he's using, I mean, he's standing there in Tiananmen Square where Mao Zedong founded the People's Republic of China and said that the Chinese people have stood up. And here's Xi Jinping again, wearing the same kind of clothing that Mao wears in the same location, saying also the Chinese people have stood up. And then he goes on, as you pointed out, um, to, to, to use this quote, which really was actually scrubbed in the official Xinhua translation. But the, the Chinese uh, language says that um, the Chinese people will in no way allow foreigners to come in and bully us. Um, whoever vainly hopes to do this will bloodily break their heads on a steel great wall built of the flesh and blood of 1.4 um, billion Chinese people. So these are the real sort of, um, you know, visceral sort of rhetoric that the party uses with its population on a very regular basis. And the other thing is we like to have this image that the Communist Party is somehow separate, that it's just oppressive, that people really want it out of there. Uh, that's not true. Um, you know, in fact, many of these ideas are very uh, popular in China. There's a huge, um, you know, sort of persistent nationalism that goes on there. And the party itself is making the case to the Chinese people that they can do this. Jonathan, uh, the whole world should worry about a communist nation uh, being the dominant superpower. What does the United States need to do to slow this progress down? We're talking a lot about investing in Chinese companies and whether or not there is a ban in place. So far, any policy out of the Biden administration has had no teeth in terms of really effectively pushing back on the CCP. What does the U.S. need to do? Well, we need to get our bankers out of China. Let's start with that. I mean, as you said, the, you know, people should worry about China's ascendancy. They should worry about the crimes against humanity that are taking place in, in Xinjiang. They should worry about the military buildup and the intention to take over Taiwan. And the fact that Xi Jinping, at the end of the day, when you listen to this speech, this is a man who's preparing his nation for war. That's what this is. And they've been doing that for a long time, for war with us, for war with their neighbors. And yet, you know, if you're um, Larry Fink, you're going into China. If, if you're Jamie Dimon, you're in China. You all want to be in China. Um, and, and, you know, the first thing the United States could do 
is is get our own house in order and we and stop funding the rise of our adversary and the conversion of China's economic power into military power. I mean, that was another key point in this speech. The real problem in America is that America is sort of talking out of two sides of its mouth. On one hand, we have policy in D.C. from, from both administrations that have tried to um, form a new strategy towards China. And yet, on the other hand, look at the Greenwich Economic Forum. I mean, it's going to host a bunch of Communist Party officials and, and you know, promote U.S. investment um, into China and vice versa. Wow. So we're not really playing a coherent game here. We're not coherent on China as a country even if we're bipartisan in Washington. That's our biggest problem. And as soon so as you stop that, as soon as we get Wall Street to reinvest in yep. the United States and stop investing in China, then we can start thinking about winning this game. Until then, you know, we're not there. So it's about money, Jonathan. It, it's just about money then yes. for those bankers. I mean, look, are they not recognizing the national security risks? I would say that Wall Street has got um, you know, a very detrimental approach to this because they can make money very simply off the rise of China. Is that good for America? Well, let's look at Xi Jinping's speech. It's a great point. Jonathan Ward, good to have you. Thanks very much for joining.